Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Thursday, all of today's guests, including John Shannon, standing by, brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Uh, Giants would like to thank their fans for their support this season at the LEC. Can't wait to welcome them back for 2023-2024. Get your season tickets for next year now at VancouverGiants.com slash season uh, tickets. Just before we get to NHL analyst John Shannon, I want to read this um, from the Delaney's OK Tire and Langley inbox. Uh, Dan in Surrey, it's an early is it just me. I totally agree with Donnie. Of course, I want to read this. About watching Dallas Stars home games, they come across great on TV. Canucks game games used to look good on, on TV, and uh, Dan goes on a, a bit. Pacific Coliseum, the lighting there was just fabulous. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Rogers Arena. Uh, it's 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 good. I wouldn't say it's 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 great. As we bring in other thing you, in Dallas is the great seats. Okay, thank you very much. That's another issue altogether. As we bring in Mr. Television, NHL uh, analyst, co-host of the Bob McCallum podcast, John Shannon. John, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? Great. It's Thursday. It's Stanley Cup playoffs. How can we go wrong? Yeah. Sp speaking of which, do you agree with me and Dan in Surrey? Uh, th there's something about the games in Dallas that really work on television. W would you agree with that? And if so, why? Well, they have the lowest, I mean, this is something that goes back to my time as uh, when I was VP of broadcasting with the NHL. We went through and did a whole survey of every game camera, you know, the, the main camera position of all 30 teams then, now 32, and Dallas has the lowest. Hmm. Uh, so the angle of the camera is lower, uh, and uh, you, in, in essence, you see a little bit more ice. And you don't see as much crowd either at the top or the bottom. Um, but it's a beautiful building and mm -hmm. designed for both basketball and hockey and everything else. And uh, they've done a magnificent job there. But it, it, in the end, um, everybody's pretty close to the same. The, if, if you want to use the, yep. the mathematical uh, triangle, you want to be 60 feet back and 40 feet up in order to make sure that you can get the proper angle for the game camera in every arena. You feel like you're right there in Dallas, and I don't know if that's the case with every arena. It might just be coming to the category of uh, it's just one of those things. Hey, uh, John Leafs down uh, one nothing to Tampa Bay after getting dumped in Game One. Michael Bunting has been suspended uh, three games. Can you tell us what the mood is like in Toronto right now, going into Game Two? Well, there's obvi there's obviously trepidation. There's obviously uh, you know a little bit of oh here we go again here. Um, but, you know, when you look at the fact that Victor Hedman's a game-time decision, I'm doubtful that he'll play. Eric Chernak is not going to play. You have two of the top four defense for, for Tampa in doubt. Um, the Maple Leafs have the opportunity to, to really take control of this series quickly. Uh, but that said, you know, Corey Perry, yeah. Sergachev, Kucherov, Point, Stamkos, they're going to have a big say in this, and and uh, and that's the thing that you have to be worried about. Everybody here's on pins and needles today because I don't know how many times you heard it. Here we go again. You know, it's not like Edmonton where they lost in the you know they gave up a goal in 17 seconds to play and then lost in overtime. The Leafs got whooped. They got whooped, and that's a bigger concern I think for a lot of people. Well, John, let's go to Edmonton where, you know what, uh, the best player in the world's only got one assist in two games and it wasn't even strength. It was on the power play. When he wakes up, it's going to be really nice for the Oilers. It is. Uh, and and here's the thing. I, I, I'm not criticizing the way Connor's playing at all. I, I think that, you know, he's been a factor. Uh, and in, in doing that and keeping Kopitar and Dano so busy, and they've done a magnificent job against him. That has really opened up a great deal of the ice for the other centermen on Edmonton for Leon Dreisaitl to play his role. But that said, the biggest difference for the Edmonton Oilers this year is their depth players. When you look at what yeah. Nick Bukestad's done, when you look at Derek Ryan scoring the first goal of the game, when you look at what uh, Matthias Ekholm has done, you know, Yamamoto's played better, uh, Warren Fogel's playing hard. This is a much different Edmonton Oilers team this year than played seven games against the Kings last year. 
And look at uh, Clawston. He got the uh, uh, the winner last year. <laughs> well, well, and, and you know, Kenny Holland has taken a lot of flack at Edmonton for not doing enough. And what is he doing? He's sitting mm -hmm. on his hands. But look at the players that yeah. he's brought in, including Clem Coston, uh, including Evander Kane, who's now playing a factor, Zach Hyman, who's can be better. It's fascinating to see what the transformation of this team, and it's much more a Ken Holland team this playoff than it certainly was last year. John, that Dallas-Minnesota series, uh, I said it was going to be a war, and it's been a war. And uh, Pavelski didn't play last night. A lot of heat on Dean Evanson for the goalie switch last night, and, and Fleury didn't look good, but you understand why he made the switch. Uh, uh, Gustafson faced 51 shots, double overtime in Game 1. Your thoughts on that series so far? Well, I hope it goes 9 because <laughs> because because that's how that's how much fun it is oh i mean that's time. that's that second period where you had those clumps of goals dallas with three and 129 yeah. minnesota with two and 11 and then uh, dallas with two more and 48 that was electric uh and and by the way a lot of what to do why why it's so much fun to watch dallas is those fans are into it they understand the game they love the game and they are right on top of you but what i would say is, is that you know, I think in the end, Dallas is just deeper. They're deeper. And, and you know, with Ryan, out Ryan Hartman playing and being healthy, yeah. that's a lot of pressure on, on Kaprizov. Uh, Zuccarello hasn't been a factor really very much so far. Um, Matt Dumba's played well. Give him credit for <laughs> the end of his tenure in, uh, in Minnesota. But uh, in the end, I think Dallas is just a, a much deeper team. When you, when you get rid of Pavelski, and could put Tyler Sagan on that power play. That tells you how deep they are. Yep. Uh, John, uh, Bruins lose last night 6-3 to the Panthers. You know, full credit to the Panthers. They finished 43 points uh, behind Boston. But is, is there a chance, John, that that might come under the category of the best thing that could happen uh, to the Bruins if, if they were overconfident that had to go out the door yesterday? Pro probably. And remember, if you look at last night, they're, they're, they lost the third period. Yeah, it was 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. It was 2-2 two -two going into the third. They lost the third period. Um, you know, you ha the, the biggest question mark is, you know, when will Patrice Bergeron be back? Is that an issue? Um, you know, I'd be more, I'll be concerned if he doesn't play game three uh, in the series in, uh, in Sunrise. But I just think the Bruins are too deep and have too much going um, you know, and I'm, you know, they're the one team you talked about the decision to play, uh, Mark Andre Fleury in game two. They're the one team that if they play Swayman mm -hmm. in game three, yep. that's just shrug your shoulders and say, okay, that's his turn. Yep. Cause they both been great so far this year. Okay. Before I let you go, John, it's official. We're old. Um, and this the, basically some number comes up every day that reminds me of that. But is it hard for you to believe that Chris Kreider, has become the Rangers all time playoff goal scoring leader, replacing the taking over from the late great Rod Gilbert. Rod Gilbert. Yeah, but how many games? How many games? Yep. You know, Chris, when you look at what how many games Chris Kreider's played in the playoffs versus Rod Gilbert. You know, when the when the Rangers went to the Stanley Cup final that Gilbert played and was impactful, it was nineteen seventy two. There was only three rounds of playoffs. Yep. Yep. You know, so how many games has Kreider played? I all of the there's so many different things in generational stuff about well, he's now the leading scorer. Yeah, but you know, they've played, you know, twenty five percent more games because there's four rounds of playoffs. It's 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 kind of an unfair comparison. I'm still upset listening to uh uh to to Ryan talk about he he barely remembers when the Raiders were in Los Angeles. Oh, oh yeah, God. that that's sad. I mean, sad tell, that's not tell, that tell long ago. Ryan, Tell Ryan they were actually in Oakland before that. Yes. And tell him the L.A. Chargers were the L.A. Chargers first. Before, before they were in they San, were, Diego. They were in San yeah. Diego. That's Young right. kids. Yeah. John, young kids I these know. days. I know. Yeah. Whippersnappers. Whippersnappers. I just love the fact that when it comes to Rod Bear versus Chris Kreider that you back the old guy. Thank you so much for that, John. <laughs> well, I, Gilbert's bought me more beers over the years. That's Whoa. the key. <laughs> Whoa. He was a, a Team Canada guy. He was uh, underrated great. They didn't win Stanley Cups, but they were right there in several hey, well, occasions. And remember, goal a game line. Come on, yeah. Donnie. Yeah. 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 Rattel and Hadfield. Yeah. Jean Rattel, Vic Hadfield, and Rod Gilbert. The, the gag line. 
We just lost everybody under 30, John, but who cares? They can Google it. <laughs> and, and Ryan can Google the, Ve- uh, the Raiders in Los Angeles. Uh-uh. Please, y- please, young kids, please. Young kids. And the Kansas City Chiefs were the Dallas Texans. Okay, come on. Oh, now, let's get wow. Ready. That's with Lamar Hunt going way back, way back. Way back. That's yeah, right. Speaking of Kansas City, the Athletics used to be the Kansas City uh, Athletics. We could and go on and on. That, then before Philadelphia, then. you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with yeah. the great Connie Mack. Connie Mack, and yeah. I did not, I do not remember Connie Mack. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now we've lost everybody uh, under forty, John. <laughs> by, by the way, uh, memo to the Lions. I'm still waiting for my jersey. So. Okay. All right. We'll see what we can do. We'll call them our twenty-two. Twenty-two. Joe Cap, right? Not Le- Jeff Flutie. Le- 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 Leroy Sledge. Sledge. Sorry. Yes. That's right. Right. Thanks for this, John. <laughs> working on it. Working on it. <laughs> Appreciate it. Cheers.